Today I'm going to show you how to use layers to adjust the image. Hello my friends and let's get started. So normally you do have adjustment layers down here and you have a lot to choose from and you can use them but uh, I will show you with a recolor for example. You can see that this affects all of the picture and in the same way. Of course you could use a mask to reduce it to just some elements of the picture but still you would have the same color over all of the picture. So this is not very fast or intuitive. So today I'm going to show you a different way on how to do this and this is just by using normal layers and a normal paintbrush. And you can go over here and set it to color and now what I can do is I can use colors but I can use different colors and I can use them in any intensity that I want to. So for example I can reduce my opacity down here 7% now you can see it's a much subtler effect and I can paint multiple times over it so it gets stronger and stronger and stronger like a normal brush would work. And you can see how useful this would be to adjust an image. For example, let's delete what I did right here. And I'm going to set this to an orange color. And I'm just going to use it down here on the road, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, opacity. And maybe a little bit less and paint on here. You can see I get a nice summer light feeling on my road. So you can see. This is off, looks pretty cool. This is on, looks like a nice warm road. So this is a nice effect. You can see I can use it just at the parts where I want to use it. Okay, let's go to another effect because you can do a lot of stuff with just a layer, a paintbrush and the blend mode. So next we are going to look here at the saturation because color and saturation is a different thing. Color sets the color, you can use it Anyway, saturation is the intensity of color, so that's a difference. And I would suggest you use, for example, a white brush. And this works via the opacity. That's so important to know. It does not work via uh, the gray value. So black and white will give you the exact same result. So when I set this to 100% opacity and I brush over this, you can see it's completely going black and white. But when I use a lower opacity like 20% you can see it will just take away a little bit of the color. So I can use this and of course when I brush and brush and brush over it the opacity stacks up and eventually it's going black and white anyways. But you can see I can use this very subtle in my picture. I think okay maybe over here the grass is a little bit too green. I don't want to have it this intense. So I can take out some color and have it less intense in that kind of area. So that's nice also over here. I can reduce the green a little bit if I don't like it. Okay, so these are two ways on how to use this. Of course there's more. Uh, for example what we can do and you have to think about or try out the different kind of uses that you can have because often there are multiple ways to do that. For example if you want to adjust the brightness in a picture you could use um, a dark gray for the brush and the low opacity, make a new layer and you could for example use soft light and go back here where you say okay maybe this is too bright for your taste so let's reduce the brightness just in this area where the fog is in the background you see. So now it's a little bit darker and of course if I brush over it a second time it's getting even darker so I can say up here it's still too bright so I brush over it one or two more times so now it's a little bit darker in the area up here but the rest of the picture still has the same um, brightness but of course I could also use darken as a setting but you can see it has a different effect. You see this is soft light and this is darken and you can also go down here where it says luminosity and you can also use luminosity and you see Again, this has a different effect than soft light. So you have to try around and see what works best for you. For example, I think that soft light 
works good when you try to tone down or make uh, bright areas a little bit darker. But over here in the darker areas where the forest is, let's make another layer. I think darken works better. You see, when I brush over this, I think this has a better effect on this area. For example, over here, I say this is already dark, but I want to have on the left side my forest a little bit darker, maybe a little bit spookier. You can see what this does to the picture. Or again, I can use luminosity. But you can see this now has a very different effect. So it doesn't look as good. It doesn't work as well compared to the other part in the middle where it worked pretty well. So we can still go back to overlay or soft light. There's a lot of different possibilities. And even here, soft light is not the worst choice. You can see you can really make a nice darker look for your picture with soft light and a black brush with a low opacity. So that's pretty nice. And this is also an important way, for example, to guide the view of um, the viewer in your picture. You want to guide their eye to where, where to look, how the picture should look and feel. So you can see if I turn on the sides and I adjust the picture as it was before, it's very different from the adjustments that we have done to the picture. So this is much more center focused and it's not as bright and it's not as candy colored and has a different feel to it. It's muter, it's maybe a bit more depressing or maybe depressing is the wrong word, but you know what I mean. And so you can really adjust a picture in a really good way. Another thing, by the way, that you can do, I will delete these layers now so we have the original picture back because this might get a bit too confusing. Another thing that you can do because up here we have some nice fog, but maybe you say, I, I want to have a bit more fog in here. So choose, uh, go make a new layer, choose overlay, choose a white brush, and again, low opacity, you can see now when I go over here, I can bring in some more intense and bright fog. And I brush again over here on the top side to make this more intense because there is more light coming from the top. And you can see now suddenly we have a lot more fog. It still looks good. You can even let the fog creep, creep in over here a little bit on the sides, which is also a nice effect. And you can see that this makes it brighter. It's not, a, it's not a good way to create fog because if I would paint over here in the forest, you can see it's just getting brighter. It's not, it's not creating uh, fog. So this is mainly a way to make an area brighter. But because we have fog here, I can put in some more fog. So this is a nice and fast way to also adjust this area of the picture and just this area. This is the nice part about this. If you use an adjustment layer, like I said, it will affect, it will affect all of the picture. And this, as you can see, is very fast and very intuitive. So I would, I would suggest to you to um, test around, try around with the different layers. I showed you some. I think the most useful that you would use for um, image adjustment with the brightness, the darkness, um, the saturation and changing the colors of the picture to bring in different motions uh, to the picture. But try out the other layer and blend modes and see what you can do with them because there are hundreds and thousands of different ways to use them. I couldn't show them all and of course I don't know them all and these seem to be the most useful. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next episode. If you like my channel, maybe subscribe to it. I make two new videos every week and if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you, for example, get my files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your work and we can talk about topics that interest you. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.